Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com for life coaching and mentoring. I can finally hear again. I wasn't talking about it to you guys. You don't know what I'm referring to, but I haven't been able to hear. I've been 80%, I had an 80% hearing loss in my, both my ears for the last five days. I haven't been able to hear much at all. Very little. It was due to earwax buildup. So I went to the doctor, they sent me to a specialist. I went to the specialist this morning and they fucking put this tube inside my ear. They did one side, then they did the other, and then they suck out all the earwax. And oh man, it's a strange experience. It really is weird, but they got a bunch of nasty shit out. Oh my God, my ears are clear. I can hear way too well now. I can hear the fucking fleas crawling on the dog's nuts in the next fucking yard over. I can hear everything. I'm not sure if I like it. I, I enjoyed being deaf a little bit. Sure made sleeping nice. <laughs> but if you haven't had your ears clean like that, you should go to an ENT, that's what it is, ear, nose, and throat doctor, and uh, get them to put that thing in your ear and suck all that shit out, oh man. I'm gonna go back once every six months. So that's gonna be my regular thing. Once every six months, I'm gonna go back and just get my ears fucking sucked. They're going to just suck my ears all out. It's a weird, weird experience. It, it, I mean, it kind of feels like a violation, <laughs> but you have to let them do it. Let's get into the topic. Talk about baboons. I was listening to a Jordan Peterson talk just the other day about baboons. He was interviewing, uh, I forget his name, but it was just... A, I had seen him before, somebody I recognized, but he's an animal biologist and he studies baboons. Or he did. He studied them for 30 years. Baboons are weird. Baboons are disgusting. I've been to Africa. I spent about eight weeks or so, two months, on safari in Tanzania, living in tents, hanging out with animals all day. And we've seen, we seen baboons on our first, it wasn't our first day, it may have been our first day driving into the game park at the Ngorongoro Crater, which is a fascinating place. It's an actual crater. But it's a lush landscape. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool place. We camped out in the crater for a couple weeks, but you got to drive this little road into it. Sometimes you have to stop to let other cars go by as they're coming out. As we stopped to let a line of cars go by, a fucking baboon jumped up on top of our Range Rover. We had a Range Rover. Baboon jumps right up on top of it. And baboons are big. These fucking things are big. I mean, they probably come up to your, maybe a little, little bit past your knees, if you're tall like me, but they're heavy. A, a baboon will fuck you up. You don't want to fight no baboon. Those things will fuck you up. And they got big teeth and like a snout, like a dog. You've seen them. And this thing's sitting right on top of our hood, right there. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. Got a driver. And the baboon grabs its dick and starts jacking off right on the Jeep, right in front of us. And we're sitting there like, oh my God. The fucking driver starts laughing and he's like, welcome to Africa. The fucking baboon nutted right on the fucking hood of the car and then jumped off. <laughs> welcome to Africa. So baboons are nasty, terrible creatures. They're, they're really mean to each other. They're, 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 not, they're not a pet. You don't want one for a pet. You could have a hyena for a pet. And motherfuckers do that. You don't want no baboon for a pet. That'll kill you. And baboons are very similar to humans in the fact that they have no real predators. Of course, they can be killed by a larger, stronger animal, but they rarely, rarely ever do. So they have no actual real predator that's hunting them. They're not looking over their shoulder like a lot of the other animals out in the, the African plains or in the bush. So they have it pretty easy, and they can forage for food and pretty much take care of all their daily survival in about four hours. They groom each other, they get some food. They're, they're pretty straight. I mean, what else do they need to do, you know? If you think about baseline survival. I was homeless. Take a shower, eat some food. If you have some shelter, you're lucky. You don't really need a lot to stay alive, to go through each day. Most of your day is boring. We have nothing to do. Of course, we fill ourselves with work and, you know, 
I could discuss the agrarian revolution and tell you why you work and why we're not hunter-gatherers, but that's a whole other video. Nonetheless, we're very similar to these creatures in this respect that we have a lot of free time on our hands and we spend that free time. Baboons spend their free time, so they only have to, real, baboons only spend four hours a day surviving. We may spend a little bit longer, but they spend the vast majority of the hours during the day socializing with each other, torturing each other, I should say, really. And that's not just some of the baboons. Most all of the baboons, they just fight each other all the time. Their family structures are brutal. They are so mean to each other. Brutal societies. The baboon societies are brutal. And there's no real reason for it. That's kind of the funny thing that these researchers have found. They just do this because they're bored or it, that's the, the, the thing that I guess they would like to figure out psychologically is why do they torture each other? Why are they so mean to each other? And they don't have to be because it doesn't really have to do with their survival. It's just they just choose to walk over to another baboon and bite his face off or to scratch him to death or whatever. And, and they're just like that. They're just nasty. They'll jump up on your truck and jack off. Who knows what they, they probably jack off on everything. They're terrible. And humans are kind of the same way. Not exactly, but very similar. That's why I thought it was a fascinating conversation because I realized that we do torture each other. Most of the human stress, the, the stress that we have as humans is due to other humans. Y your baseline survival is fairly easy. You need a little bit of food. You need some shelter. You need some water. You don't really need a whole lot else. And we spend a lot of time picking on each other, fucking with each other interacting with each other in these negative ways and there's a lot of people who have this kind of meme philosophy you know philosophy that they've kind of taken from memes on Facebook or Instagram and 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 there's this kind of I hate people kind of philosophy that certain certain folks have I always laugh at that because you live in society if you hated people you'd be living out in the middle of nowhere wearing overalls and have a big beard making moonshine or whatever you know being a, a, a hermit no, go look on a population map. We all live on top of each other in these little slivers of coastline all throughout the planet. We have these vast areas of like no man's land in between. And uh, I mean, that, you know, go look at a population map. It's pretty shocking. We're living on top of each other. And then we hate each other. And we spend so much of our time with negative interactions and a negative mindset towards our fellow man. We, we, if you see somebody like the Dalai Lama, I could reference Jesus and other people, but the Dalai Lama is still alive. He's a, a reference that's real that we can, you know, you can go watch videos of him. He's a real happy guy because he's kind of had this, has this enlightenment thing going on. At least that's what he promotes. I should make a video about the Dalai Lama being a CIA agent. You didn't know that, but we're not going to get into that in this video. But he's kind of this happy child, kind of wise old man kind of attitude. And it's because of the Buddhist stuff that he follows. Those types of people are absolutely rare and they're weirdos when we run across them. Have you ever run across somebody who was real happy? One of these Ned Flanders types? You know, howdly doodly neighbor, you know, like on The Simpsons. People like that are weird. Why are you so fucking happy, motherfucker? So we pick on each other. We make our lives miserable, and we make each other's lives miserable. So I think it's worth no just noting one thing that they pointed out in the study of the baboons, which I thought was interesting also, just to continue with it and we'll end off here, but the male, the, the dominant alpha male baboons didn't have a particularly long lifestyle. I mean, long lifespan, I should say, lifespan. So they didn't live really long. But th they play a necessary role in the societies, particularly when it comes time to war against another group, which happens often. Because remember, I told you, these guys are total dicks. They're jerks. So they're always fighting each other and other groups. And then they often fight. They may have to send 
the, 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 the most alpha males in one group may have to do a sneak attack on another group just because they want to steal some food. And, and this happens often. And they're, they're notorious thieves. They may not need the food. It may not necessarily be a survival issue. We're going to starve without this. No, they're just jerks. So the dominant alpha males live a particularly dangerous lifestyle. And they're bigger. There's a noticeable difference between an alpha male and a beta male. Kind of with humans also. The alpha males have a more of a, a proclivity for war. They'll pop off real quick. Bite your face off real quick, man. <laughs> they snap quick. But they die quicker. But they're necessary. Because without them, the, the, the group may not really survive well. Particularly if they're being attacked by another group. And we find this in our human civilization as well, with, with humans. That we have these alpha males that are particularly warlike, at least you get a big tough guy with big shoulders and a big chest and he works out. That type of person, and it's been studied statistically, is more ready to send troops to battle when it comes time to political uh, conflicts as opposed to a beta male who would analyze the same situation and, and, and their uh, suggestion might be to let's talk it out Let's do some conflict resolution. Whereas the alpha male is like, send in the Marines. Kill them all, let God sort them out. The beta male is like, well, we should sit down and talk. That's been studied. And alpha male humans often have a shorter lifespan because of their lifestyle in many ways. But without them, our species completely dies. We completely die. The, the, this is why the push towards the feminization of society, this, this wave of feminism that somehow even these man bun skinny jeans dudes have embraced and promoted this kind of beta male philosophy, this passive emasculated man, that will absolutely be the downfall of the human civilization. We don't need to nuke ourselves. All we need to do is get rid of the alpha males and we're done for. It's weird, food for thought.